Last year, in my engineering class, my teacher taught us how cryptocurrency impacted the environment. When I first heard this, my first thought was, how could something that wasn't physical, like cryptocurrency, impact the environment? Later that day, I went home and Googled cryptocurrency. When I started my research, I just started to Google Bitcoin because I had heard of it in conversations, on social media, and in the news. This engineering lesson sparked my interest in cryptocurrency and how it impacts the world around us. Today, we live in a society where paying for things or transferring our money is one touch away on a computer, phone, or watch. Money has always been vital to society, and still is. However, with modernizing payments, new ways to pay for things have been introduced. The first way modernizing payments started was in 1946. This was the charger card. It was introduced by the Flatbush Bank of Brooklyn. However, the credit card could only be used within two square blocks of the bank, so there was very limited use of where purchases with the card could be made. The first modern day credit card was created in 1950. This was the Diners Club card. It started with 200 card holders and could be used at 14 restaurants within New York City. At the end of the year, it grew to 10,000 card holders and could be used at 28 restaurants and two hotels. Today, almost every adult uses a credit card. The next step in modernizing payments was in 2009, when Andrew Cortina created the first ever mobile payment service, Venmo. Venmo allowed people to send money via phone instead of sending a check. Similar to the credit card, just about every adult also uses Venmo. But what is the cause for such great changes in how we pay for things and transfer our money? Because with developing technology, we are able to create new and easier ways to pay for things and transfer our money. That continued later in 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto created the first ever cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Bitcoins are lines of computer code that are digitally signed over every time a transaction is made. Since 2009, more cryptocurrencies have been introduced. And today, in 2021, there are over 6,000 different cryptocurrencies. But how are cryptocurrencies created? They are created by crypto mining. Crypto mining is a process in which new crypto are entered into circulation. It is done by performing algorithmic processes on sophisticated computers. Mining for crypto has turned into the modern day California gold rush because of how its value has risen, its popularity, and the rush to invest in it. While mining for gold and mining for crypto may seem very different, they're actually quite similar. The similarities include their popularity, their value, and their negative impact on the environment. The only difference is that instead of mining for gold, people mine for crypto. In addition to solving algorithmic processes, crypto miners also approve other people's transactions. When they do, they receive crypto in return. Crypto miners also make sure that there aren't too many cryptos in circulation. For example, at Bitcoin, there can only be 21 million Bitcoins in circulation. When crypto is mined, lots of energy and power are needed to mine it. And when it was mined in China, dirty energy was used to mine that crypto. However, new and cleaner ways to mine crypto have been introduced. At the Genesis Mining Farm in Iceland, green energy from hydro and geothermal sources are used to mine that crypto. In an article from NPR, they said that researchers at the University of Cambridge estimated that mining for Bitcoin annually consumes more energy than the whole country of Argentina. While this has a negative impact on the environment, it does show that people are ready to invest in crypto. As a result of crypto's growth into a somewhat reliable currency, people and businesses are now taking payments in crypto, and some people are even taking their salaries in crypto. In 2020, Carolina Panda's offensive lineman, Russell Okung, took half of his $13 million salary in Bitcoin. And it's not just him. In a study done by The Motley Fool, 40% of Americans said that they would be willing to take a portion of their salary in crypto. And in the same study, 
31% of Americans said that they'd be willing to take their whole salary in crypto. Businesses and companies also accept payments in crypto. Restaurants, such as Burger King, Domino's, and Subway, banks and payment services, such as PayPal and Intuit, and gaming brands like Xbox and PlayStation. There are also many more companies and businesses that accept payments in crypto. But you can also invest in crypto on your own, and there are many ways to do so. You can invest on the website of your choice, for example, going on Bitcoin's website, entering an amount of money, making a payment, and receiving the same currency, the same value you got in Bitcoin. Or you could use a cryptocurrency broker, which is trading on your behalf. Another way to invest is to use an exchange, which is a marketplace for buyers and sellers to trade crypto. One final way to invest is to buy a mining device and self-mine and mine your own crypto. With so many ways to invest, we need a way to store crypto. The main ways to store crypto are in a hot wallet or a cold wallet. A hot wallet allows the users to send and accept tokens. However, it is more prone to breaches within the account. On the other hand, the cold wallet, which is offline, means it has a much lower chance of being compromised, but is less efficient because it is offline and cannot accept and send tokens. While the term of the use wallet may make crypto seem like a regular currency, it actually fluctuates very similar to a stock. In the past year, Ethereum's rise has <clears throat> opened the eyes of lots of people. I decided to compare the growth of Ethereum compared to the stock market, specifically the S&P 500 index. A year ago, a $100 investment in Ethereum would return today as $850. And that same $100 invested in the S&P 500 would return as $127. However, since crypto is volatile, that same investment on a different day may return as a different price. Say you made that investment on May 1st, 2021. That $100 would return you $102. And the same $100 in the S&P 500 would return you $103. This brings to light one of the glaring downsides of crypto, its volatility. However, crypto also has its many upsides, such as that it can be used similar to Venmo or a credit card. However, there is no transaction fee or credit card company involved. Additionally, with strong security, it allows a person to feel safe and that there's lower risk of being hacked. Having a private key or the option of a cold wallet when you make your transactions is a great example of the security provided. However, with crypto's rise in value, it has attracted many users from the black market. Black market users have used crypto to gamble, buy illegal drugs, illegal guns, and stolen art. Additionally, when a crypto transaction is made, the person cannot try to return their transaction. The money is already gone. But let's take a step back. We've talked about cryptocurrency, what it is, how mining works, its impact on the environment, the ways in which it accept is accepted, the different ways to invest in it, and how it can be stored. But I haven't told you how it functions within the cashless society that we live in today. That, that said, Crypto functions flawlessly with the cashless society. However, there's no common consensus on how it should be stored, how it should be traded. On September 7th, 2021, El Salvador made Bitcoin its national currency. And on September 24th, 2021, China banned all crypto transactions and services within the country. That said, there is one consensus that cryptocurrency is changing the way we spend our money and is quickly becoming a popular alternative to Venmo and credit card. Soon, we might not be able to imagine a life without crypto. Thank you.